Makara, and this is Carb Addict Now Carnivore. And today I am delighted to welcome Bitten Johnson to the broadcast. Bitten is a licensed nurse addiction specialist, and she's certified um, as uh, she's certified to uh, help people with sugar addiction in particular, but in an addiction in general as well. And she passes on her knowledge and her expertise to others so that there will be more of us in the world who can treat this uh, deadly disease of addiction. So uh, Bitten, I came across you at the uh, Quit Sugar Summit. And as soon as I saw you there, I was like, I've got, I've got to talk to her. <laughs> so thank you for coming thank you. on. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. One thing I was interested in asking you is you have on your website, the root, the Latin root of the word addiction. And I've never talked about that before. So could you talk a little bit about what addiction actually means? Yeah. Comes from the word addicere, which means enslaved. And um, I learned about addiction more than 38 years ago when I ended up in treatment for my alcoholism. And coming from Sweden, I thought I was the worst character, flaw, uh, shameful. I mean, you know, the worst of the worst. And um, I ended up in treatment and I was so shocked and I got very angry because I learned from the staff and from scientists they had on uh, but the brain and the dopamine system and what addiction is, uh, that it is a brain illness. And, you know, uh, I got a lot of research around it about the dopamine system and, well, a lot of neurotransmitters. And I understood that some of us have a sensitivity to develop an addiction if we uh, come in contact with a psychoactive substance or a process. So at that time, that was shocking to me. Uh, and I felt, you know, like I'd been fooled before being, you know, hiding and lying and shamed and all that. Mm -hmm. So I fell in love with addiction medicine and I decided to learn everything I could about it. So I've studied it sin since. And today, you know, I truly understand the biochemistry and the body's system and how it develops. It's not something you choose. You know, you don't go out and say, oh, I'm going to drink or take heroin, so I'll become an addict. It is if uh, that drug comes into your brain, your body and your brain, of course, or a process like gambling or screens could cause it too. And there's actually two scientists in Sweden, Lars Olsson and Stefan Brenea, that did all the groundbreaking research on gambling, showing with, uh, you know, uh, the brain scans that the same biochemical response happens in your brain if you're on the screen or when you drink alcohol. It was the same activation in the brain's reward centers, system is a better word. And so with the years, I've studied more and more. And today I understand that addiction is a brain illness. Uh, you know, it's about your brain. And, uh, but you get several uh, severe consequences, physiologically, psychologically, socially, and spiritually. And this is according to ASAM, the American uh, Society for Addiction Specialists. They are the world leaders in clinical and science work with addiction. So that's what, what I've been working with for years. And being a nurse, uh, I don't like to treat guesswork. So therefore, I have developed screening tools and diagnostic tools because what's uh, something that most people don't understand is that there is a big difference between being a normal user. Not everybody that drinks become an alcoholic or eats sugar becomes a sugar addict. Not at all. And, and some people have what we call a harmful use. They are not addicts. But they do have a lifestyle that will create consequences in meantime. So then there are the addicts. <laughs> they are the hardcore, so to speak. So I choose to work only with addicts because people are so afraid of the word addiction, which is too sad because it's a word that will free you if you understand what it is. 
relieve you from stigma and shame and denial and all the pain thinking that you are crazy. You're not. So uh, that's why I work the way I do. And uh, I told I started being an addict and alcoholic in recovery. And then I was still smoking at that time. So after seven years, I decided to be even healthier. So I quit smoking. Mm. And at that time, I almost drowned in chocolate and ice cream. I mean, I could not stop. So that shocked me. How in the whole world could I stop alcohol and nicotine, but I can't quit eating, you know, sugar and carbs? It, it was so baffling to me. And at that time in 92, I knew nothing. I never heard the word food addiction. So when a colleague said that to me, I almost fell backwards. I said, it's not possible to be a food addict. You can't, you have to have food. I mean, how is that going together? Uh, but I didn't know at that time. So I started studying that instead and realized that the sugar addicts of the world, they are many, 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 many more than the alcoholics and the heroin addicts and all that. Uh, so I started to work on my own recovery, which was a rocky road in the beginning. It was really tricky. We didn't have uh, a lot of knowledge about nutrition and about the biochemistry. And we didn't have knowledge about the microbiome. And I mean, we only knew a little bit about the brain. And we could see that sugar addicts were exactly like alcoholism. Different drugs. Uh, so but so I I draw a lot from my study and my work with alcohol and drug addicts into work started to work with sugar addicts because there were no program at that time so i just developed it as i went you know and it worked exactly the same mm. so i got drug free from you know that type of food and i helped others be drug free and during all these years i developed a treatment that is holistic you have to work with all areas of a person's life. You can't, if you only switch to food, you're not going to stay in recovery. Or if you only take care of the mental problems, you know, you're going to fall back in the food and so forth. So that's why I work with holistic treatment and holistic training to see the whole person. Yes, that's wonderful. Um because uh, I see that so many programs are focused on one thing. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yes. I know that. And I was lucky in the early years, I had naturopathic doctors and integrative functional medicine and orthomolecular medicine specialists around me. And a lot of people think that they work, you know, like woo-woo or foil hats, but they don't. They work with incredible uh, science that's been around for a long time but of course you know if we don't use it we lose it so uh, they taught me a lot about holistic like the microbiome and and you know how uh, it, today we know that if you have the wrong flora in your intestine you can have horrible cravings and also you might not lose weight no matter what you do and the brain talks to the the stomach talks to the brain all the time I mean, the brain-gut connection and so forth. Uh, we know that today. But at that time, nobody knew that. But they started teaching me about this. You know, when you eat a lot of sugar and flour, you get candy, that overgrowth in your stomach, and that causes craving. And you get the lack of neurotransmitters because they are made in your stomach. And that gives you depression. And there was that's just a few of the connections we made. So that was very obvious to create a holistic treatment plan. Yes, I can definitely see how that would be so important to heal the body, not just work on the brain, but heal the biome and all of that. And most uh, addicts uh, have severe stress, so they have adrenal fatigue. And if yeah. you have adrenal fatigue, that would cause hypothyroidism, so your thyroid is not functioning properly. I mean, you could go on and on and talk for hours about all these connections. So in order to start healing somebody, you have to take away the drug, the, the poisonous part of the, the food and eat proper natural food. And uh, that's number one and the most important step to start healing. But then you have to help the body heal, you know, with biochemical repair, with the breathing, 
you know, it's amazing to me when I learned about breathing techniques that you think you breathe, you know how to breathe, right? You're breathing now all the time. Mm -hmm. But a, a stressed addict will overbreathe. They will breathe, you know, in a very shallow, short way. Mm -hmm. So when you breathe too fast in and out, your body cannot extract the oxygen to your cells in a proper way or the uh, carbon dioxide. And also we think that carbon dioxide is a poison. It's not. It's one of two of the body's largest relaxation system. Mm. If you don't have enough carbon dioxide in your body, your blood vessels will be constricted. And if you think of something constricted, does it take up or get rid of toxins, take up nourishment? No. So, I mean, there are basically, you know, old knowledge that, that we are reviving and getting into this uh, working uh, with helping people. So we do that. We work with sleep hygiene. We work with physical activity. Uh, we work with supplements for some people, magnesium, for instance. A lot of people have a severe lack of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, or fish oil, or there are some of those things that are, you know, very good to start taking. So once you start healing your brain and healing your body, uh -huh. then you get energy to deal with all the problems that your addiction has caused during your life. Because when you're an addict, you have what we call foggy brain. Your brain is not, it's, you know, not functioning properly. So you don't deal with trauma or sadness or grief or anger you don't develop that part of the brain to deal with uh, things that happens in your life so it's sort of buried or put mm -hmm. cement on it <laughs> and right. then when you start healing you go like oh my goodness i have a tendency to be like this or that or not deal with that or whatever so then the recovery part starts which is 90 percent of the whole treatment program uh, then you have to start changing you know and and it was funny when i came into aa they said to me this is easy all you have to do is change everything in your life <laughs> <laughs> you know i almost turned and ran home and thought i can never do that and i said how is that that's not possible and they said yes it is one step at a time one day at a time and it is very possible. So. Absolutely. I had that kind of a change before I realized that I was addicted to carbohydrates. Yeah. Uh, when I, I got a divorce, um, what I didn't realize at the time was that I, I had my tolerance for the dysfunction. I had grown to the point where I could no longer tolerate the dysfunction and the divorce was a symptom of my change of my entire life. I even changed my name. Oh. So I totally understand if you want if you want to have a different path, then you need to become a different person because the old person liked that path. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start repeat all the negative things yes. you've done years and years. Yes. And, you know, if nothing changes, nothing changes is what we say. Yes. Or as what you talked about, I would refer to I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. So yeah. I've had it, you know, but of course, we don't know how to do this. And we don't know that we have to practice a new way of being every day. It's like being a top athlete. It's not going to come. You can't go and buy recovery in a store. You know, oh, can I have this package and then do it? And then you're all good. Yeah. Uh, that's why so many people have a hard time with this because it is all about action. It's mm -hmm. not about, you can't think, read, and talk yourself out of, you know, uh, a sick uh, being, uh, being in, in um, drugging and, and eating, or you can't, there's no, I mean, people have thousands of self-help books, but nothing changed right so we know a lot and we have tons of science today tons of science and cookbooks and i mean you know recipes blah, blah, blah. but if you don't actually take the steps every day nothing going to change nothing 
Yes, yes. That that's a big picture. And then taking it down to the small picture. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, would you want to tell me about the small picture? The little things that make the big difference. Okay. First of all, the, if you're an addict, I only speak for addicts, not for harmful users or the other people, you know, um, because I specialized in addiction. So you have to take away the drug food. And that means every processed food, everything with sugar, sweeteners, any flour of any kind, doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, flour is not working on us. And other carbs like rice, potato, you know, uh, ricey, veggies and all that. You have to go low, low carb because uh, having, having uh, being afflicted with a sugar addiction means that you have a sugar sensitive brain. A sugar sensitive brain cannot keep eating carbs. Carbs are sugar, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you chew uh, potatoes, that's starch, that's sugar mm -hmm. or whatever bread or whatever we take. So you have to go uh, cold turkey. A lot of people talk about, you know, cutting down slowly. Uh, I work with thousands of clients and I'll tell you what, cutting down slowly is a miserable detour with pain. The reason for that is that every bite of keeping some of the drug would trigger your addiction and your craving and your bad stomach and, you know, all the negative consequences of eating it. So it's like, you know, you, 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 if you're locked up, maybe someone could detox you slowly. You don't have access to stuff. Mm -hmm. But Let's say that you have children, you work, you have to do stuff, you know, and that craving is constantly like a pain in your body and your head. You're going to start eating again. So people try that way and they relapse big time, go back to the eating, get worse, and they come back. And I said, well, why don't we do it the brutal but easy way? Let's cut to start eating three meals a day with natural food and animal-based food. I've never seen a 100% plant-based person really succeed in being in recovery for a long time. Sooner or later, that's too much carbs. Mm -hmm. That's how basic simple it is. And also we're made for animal fat in our brain. I used to joke and say, it's not olive oil in your brain there. And your brain is made out of a lot of fat. Yeah. It should be because that's healthy. So it's genetic, what we are made to eat. I mean, a horse is, you know, not made to eat meat. We are made to eat meat and, uh, you know, some veggies. But also, if, you, if I look back at when I grew up in the 50s and 60s, we didn't have a lot of veggies. We didn't have a lot of carbs. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to grow it in this winter up in Sweden. So we did have a lot of butter. We did have a lot of meat, different types of meat. We had eggs and I love eggs. I eat eggs every day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, we had the food that we didn't have processed or ultra processed food mixed with this natural food. So we didn't get sick. And almost everybody was slim at that time. If you look back on old pictures, you can see that. Old yes. movies, what have you. And then, you know, the low fat came around, 84 in US and 89. That's when all hell broke loose is what I say. Because then they took away the natural fat in food and they added sugar for flavor. And that is one of the worst things that done to mankind to do that. Uh, so eating three meals a day, nothing in between, why shouldn't you eat snacks? Well, because your body needs to rest between meals to produce hydrochloric acid in your stomach, which is extremely important to break down food so that your body can extract it and make amino acids and make neurotransmitters. That's easy peasy, you know. Um, and uh, enzymes, so it breaks down like fat and protein. So if you constantly eat, I think Ben Asadi, uh, keto camp guy, he once said to me in that 
Americans snack 23 times a day. That's deadly. That's yes. deadly. <laughs> Your body never recuperate. Your pancreas must go on overload to produce insulin all the time. No wonder we get diabetes and insulin resistance and get sick. Yes. And no wonder our brain is all off and we think we're depressed or have diagnosis and God what have you when it is malnourished brain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then it's good to, uh, uh, it's very, very good to start developing healthy um, lifestyles. Like, you know, if you stress, learn coping strategies. Um, I love to teach people how to breathe. And they tell me, what? I know how to breathe. I said, no, you don't. And I test them. And I said, uh, you know, you should have about 12 breaths a minute, 6 to 12, and they have 15, 18, 22. And what? they look at me baffled and say, really? I said, yes, I counted you. <laughs> so I teach them to nose breathe, you know, no, breathe in and out through your nose, calm in and out silent and your exhale should always be much longer than your inhale something you can practice when you're walking when you're at the grocery store when you drive your car when you watch tv when now when you sit and listen to me babbling here uh, i use a relaxator which is the cutest little tool it's a breath resistance that mm. actually this is diaphragm exercise your diaphragm is your best breathing muscle, right? Mm -hmm. So we use this, inhale through the nose and exhale through this. And it's a little resistance in here. I practice that, you know, when I'm walking, when I watch TV, when I read, I don't even think about it. So there are little tools you can use. And then something I do, uh, I tape my mouth at night. Oh, I heard not. I love it. I love it. And uh, when I don't do, I'm more tired the day after. I sleep calmer, more relaxed. If I just put this on, I kiss my dog, sleep well, darling. And then I put it on and fall asleep. So, uh, you know, those are some of the very simple tools. There is no rocket science. Nothing is expensive. You don't buy, you know, uh, four months training class. Uh, I love walking. Uh, I love forest bathing. I think there is a lot of power in nature. Mm. If you don't have forests like I do here, take a walk in the park. You know, look at the tree. Yeah. Put your hand on the tree. That's amazing. There's research that when you touch a tree, good things fall down from the leaves. Mm. And then a lot of that research in Japan so you can read, if you go out and Google forest bathing, you get a lot of science about that. It's not, you know, woo -woo. Uh, and sun. The sun is so extremely important to us. If you don't get sun in your eyes, you're going to be depressed. Mm -hmm. You need sun on your skin. You know, we've been scared for red meat, salt, butter, and sun. That's why all those four should be included in our daily living plan in some way so don't be afraid of the sun but don't go and lay naked for hours in the basking sun take it easy take a walk sit down take a longer walk so the sun is extremely important for our health we're made for sun ex sun rays mm -hmm. uh, especially in the morning and in the evening the red light is very important for us uh, you know, and then uh, there are so many good things you can do. Of course, most people have lack of oxytocin, which is the second huge relaxation system in your body, natural. You don't have to go buy anything. It's inside of you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, any type of uh, uh, meditation or petting a dog or hugging each other, going to the hairdresser, get manicure pedicure massage i mean there are small things that are not expensive that you can start add to your life um you know 
relaxation in a very natural way. Put that in and people think, oh, when am I going to have time to that? I work. Well, what about two minutes? You know, I read somewhere, if you want to change your life and let's say you want to do um, a special exercise, okay? And you think, then we always think, oh, I have to do 15 and three times and uh, and I say, do one. And they look at me, what? Start with one. Do one for a week. Maybe you do two next week. So what? You have all the time in the world to build your health because how many years did you unravel your health? Uh, so, you know, there are so many things and I think laughter is extremely important. I have, I look at um, stand-up comedy. I love the English crazy guys, uh, the old ones, you know, with that uh, stand-up and where I read a funny book and I laugh at my dog and I laugh with my friends. We tell each other jokes. I think it's very important to laugh every day. Let your hair down. Um, you know, there are so many things. Then if you have an interest, I absolutely space nerd. So of course I was at, uh, I've been at space Ken the Kennedy Space Center now when the Swede Marcus Wundt went up to space yesterday. So now I'm going looking at the news. Had they interviewed him? Oh yeah. Had they... <laughs> Well, I'm so excited what he's going to do up there. And I, one of my heroes is Brian Cox, the astrophysicist. Mm -hmm. He's so spiritual. He talks in such a spiritual, um, touch, touching way about life and earth and space. And find something like that, anything. You don't have to like space like I do. You, but find something that makes you be in awe. Of. I love that word, to be in awe. Of now and then uh, I mean there are so many things you can do I could think of hundreds of things I could write a list on do this try this try this if you don't like it try something else uh, there is no I don't think once we wake up and get rid of the poisonous food and we start regaining health mm -hmm. uh, the sky is the limit it's up to you how you create that life I'm not going to tell you what to do I can share what I do. I listen to you share. And I said, oh, that sounds fun. I'm going to do like you do. Uh, but, you know, there is no rigid form or certain way. No. Um, the, the goal is to be happy, joyous, and free. Once you get rid of the drug and your brain starts waking up, you go, hmm, that's interesting. Oh, I don't do that. Or, But, you know, when you eat in a way that your whole body is on poison nothing is fun you just trudge and you need the drug to to survive actually which is so sad yes i took dance classes uh i've been looking for dan uh, dance classes in this place i just moved to and i haven't found them yet but um, I love dance classes that you move your body and it's not strenuous. Yes, like yes, yes, I do too. I used to be a disco rat when I was young. I love to go dance disco. Yes, yeah. I agree totally. Dance classes <laughs> is beautiful. Yeah. And you know, I love to see now that you have chair yoga. If you don't have time to go to the gym, you could do that on your office chair. If you have an office, uh, you could walk. What I do, like I have a headset to my phone, I have a little treadmill, and you know, if I don't use that, when I talk to somebody, I don't just sit. I can walk around in my apartment, pet the dog, but I can talk. Yes. So, you have to be, and I think, you know, a lot of people think, well, I don't know how to do that or whatever. And I think, you know what, you still drag because your creativity center is not awake. Mm. Once you clean up, your creativity is going to come back. Yes. Because you're made in that way. Yes. And life is so exciting. There's so many things to do. I was just thinking this morning, I want. I live in Florida. I haven't lived here very long. And I want to tour Florida. I just want to go on a road trip and oh, see some places yes. in Florida. <laughs> of course. I've been to Florida and I loved it. Yeah, so been to the Kennedy Space Center when I was young, and I've been to Sarasota, and I've been to, uh, there's another place, I don't remember the na name right now, Saratoga, I think. Mm -hmm. 
well, I, so I've been there three times anyway. And, you know, it's lovely nature, yeah. uh, lovely climate and so forth. But we do here too, except for January, February and March. It could Perfect. be nasty. But then you think, okay, so what can I do instead? If I can't be out running around, what can I do inside? Mm -hmm. the, the old British comedies just keep me laughing. There's an old British comedy about these people in this nursing home and, and they're very old, but it's funny. And the title of it is Waiting for God. <laughs> <laughs> it, it yes, is, yes, the title is hilarious. Yes. It's hilarious. <laughs> Those kind uh -huh. of things that you laugh when you think about it. Yeah, know? right, right. Immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love those old comedies too, you know, and I watch them on YouTube and giggle and laugh and yeah. Yeah, yeah. so wonderful. <laughs> I misspelled the uh, title on my uh, car carnivorsity. I did a one year thing and it, it was just last month. I've just been one year carnivore now. And Ooh, great. Uh, I misspelled the word on my thumbnail. And I put carnivorsity like at a university. <laughs> I love of, it. Instead of carnivorsary. Yeah, but isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I didn't even notice it till somebody put in the comments. Carnivorsary is when you celebrate one year. Carnivorsity is when you learn to eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. That's hysterical. That's funny. That's so funny. Much. I left it. I haven't, I haven't corrected. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? I do stuff like that all the time too. I'm very quick when I do things, you know, and I mm -hmm. can do, and with the spell check today, you can actually do some pretty hilarious things or very bad things. And then you have to apologize. <laughs> it's happened many times. Oh my goodness. You send the message and you go, Oh no. <laughs> what did it write? <laughs> Yes, oh. exactly. Uh, so one thing I think that we we're talking about here is finding the joy in mm -hmm. like this, this, this elimination of various components of our life is not deprivation. It's finding the joy and freedom It's freedom. I want to point out that it is freedom. Yes. I think that is very important, you know, not only finding joy, but you're free because uh, what people think they're trying to control the drug, the food, mm -hmm. but the drug, the food, and as I call the illness, the red dog, the nasty little red dog, it's controlling you and they don't see that. So one of the things I do with my clients is I draw horrible pictures to scare them, <laughs> you know, and show them. So uh, talk about loss of control and point out to them when I listen to the way they behave but that's loss of control who ruled oh yeah it was the drug making me go into the store I had craving yeah so are you in charge no right. and you know uh, that is one important thing to show people that if you're hooked you're hooked you're not in charge not right. at all and then helping them be free Yes, you're making conscious decisions, not just yeah. going with this, these urges that are sweeping yeah. you where you don't want to go. Yeah, yeah. And how, you know, we talk about different types of craving, like cue-induced craving, that's constantly smelling the drug, being in, a, in the environment where you have the drug, smell it, see it, hear it, you know, like in a, in a movie theater, you hear people eating. Uh, that triggers craving and people think that they can resist craving with willpower. And I say, ha, ha, ha. Willpower is the white unicorn when it comes to addiction. So, uh, you know, the, the craving is physical. It's something that is like a pain attack in your brain. So it's not something you can have willpower over. Either it hits you. So we have to learn how to prevent it. Or if it comes up, you know, you deal with it before it's humongous. Once it is just a tiny craving and you go, oh, oh, I need to deal with this. 
<clears throat> so uh, instead of waiting until you know you're totally obsessed and your whole brain is filled like in my case it would be chocolate or ice cream or something stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, you know so even if the slightest little thing comes up in my brain I nip it in the bud mm -hmm. I don't let it grow and I think oh wait a minute am I thirsty you know do I need to stretch what's going on am I irritated or something ah. so I, I grab it right away and deal with it mm -hmm. so it doesn't grow on me because I've been in the case when I've been almost you know the bite the rubber bite ring the kids have the teething mm -hmm. I've yeah. been it's, craving has been so bad that I was you know holding one of those in my mouth and all like you know this and you don't have to feel in that way it's mm -hmm. horrible why would I want to do that so I I live my way in a way that I don't end up there yes such good that's such good insight I went through that one time mm -hmm. where I had that intense uh craving yeah and after that I uh, immediately as soon as I start to feel I just get away from it whatever it yeah. takes turn my yeah. head you yeah. know what because I never want to go back there again that exactly. was horrible no, it was horrible and so many people relapsed because of that because they don't think they think they can handle it with willpower mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sure babe say oh I, I tell them sure mm -mm, not gonna work Right, right. Yeah. You can't play around no. with addiction. No. You can't tease it or, or um, like uh, play chicken. You know, with a dare uh, of how close can I get to the edge? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. And the illness is very powerful. We say that it is cunning, baffling, powerful, and very patient. So it could be laying dormant for a couple of years, and one day it goes, "Hoo hoo!" You know. Yes. I'm back. <laughs> yes yes you have to be prepared yes Something triggered it you know so you have to you, it, you can't kill it and you know with medical terms we say addiction is a chronic illness once it has developed it's going to be there forever which means you know in in uh, daily uh, talk is that there's no way to cure it but it can go into remission you can be symptom free Yes. And that is serenity, uh, it's joy, it's freedom. And yes. if it rears its ugly he head up, you know, you go, hoo, 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 are you here again? Well, I'm not going to play with you. No way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, I teach a, a writing class at the local library. And yeah. one yeah. morning I walked in and there was a, a plastic container of muffins on the table. Oh. Oh, I wasn't expecting food. I mean, it was a library. We usually don't have yeah. a library. Somebody had put a plastic thing from the grocery store of muffins. And I walked in there and I, and I went, and you know, at uh, in that instant, that decision, that, pan, that container of muffins is dead to me. Yeah. I'm never going to look at it the whole time I'm here. Yeah. And, were eating it and all that and I it was like my eyes were up above mm -hmm. I, I didn't even but I had to make that choice because instantly yep. I felt it, it I used to say it's going to move into your head so you have to make a decision but you know I'm curious how did you find this way what happened I'm so why did you do this why did I say you're dead to me? The the muffin? No, 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 no. Why why did you start with the low carb keto carnivore? Oh, okay. oh. <clears throat> so, I started because I was having stomach problems and a lot of stomach pain. So I just started it as a uh, elimination diet to see why I what I was eating that was bothering me. Oh, okay. And then after I got into it for a month, I was feeling so good that I decided mm -hmm. I'm going to stay with it. I'm going to stick, oh. stick with this for a while. So about three months in, all that time I'd been drinking coffee with electrolytes and it was a little salty taste yeah. um, because I was so addicted to the sugary creamers and all of that. Oh. Uh -huh. That was part of my daily routine, very syrupy, sweet coffee. Mm. So um, when 
I was about three months in, I thought I'll just try some artificial sweetener in my coffee and see if I, how I do with it. So I put it in there. And that day, that was the day when I had that horrible craving. I hadn't had any sugar for three months. I put yeah. artificial sweetener. My brain was on fire. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I had to go, I'd go lie on my bed, was gripping my hands and saying, please, please let me get through this. Yeah. I didn't want to go back because I didn't want to lose the three month, pro uh, you know, I made a lot no. of progress, but after it was over, I can remember so well, I got up, I went into the kitchen. I thought I need to get some dinner. And I was thinking about what happened that morning. I was standing by the coffee pot and it was reminding me of what happened that morning. And I just had this flash of insight. Now I'm a hypnotherapist. I am, you know, very aware, self-aware, but you're, you're addicted. You are, you are an addict. And it just came over me and I knew it was true. And in that moment, because I realized I was addicted, that was what yeah. helped me not yeah. go back. Because then I realized the seriousness of it. Uh -huh. I realized the danger, how dangerous it is for me. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I made a choice that day. I yeah. am not going to go back into the, into the swamp. I'm not going to go <laughs> with the crocodiles, the with all the crocodiles. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm taking control of my life. I like where my life is yeah. right now. Interesting. Very that, interesting. But yeah, the, the, the realization that I was addicted helped me. Yeah. That. Yeah. It, this, the, it was the same for me. Oh, I, I mean, I didn't like the idea first. I wanted to cry and thought, my goodness, how could that happen to me? But once I learned everything about addiction and the brain, it was like, oh, that explains why I've been so crazy. Why I was depressed in the morning because I had sugar binges in the evening. And of course, sugar makes my blood sugar go bonkers. That's why I felt miserable in the morning. And then I felt better during the day and I had sugar again. And, you know, the story went on and on. Mm -hmm. And it's like the, you know, eyes open and you go, oh, shoot. You start to connect. I like to call it too, connecting the dots. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's and, what happened. And, and I cried. I stood in my yeah, kitchen. I yeah. Cried. Yeah. I was thinking I'm never going to eat potatoes again. I yeah. cried. Potatoes yeah. are things, you know, never eat ice cream again. Oh, boy. Yeah, bad, bad. Ooh, I know yeah. the feeling at that time, and that doesn't bother me. Yes. But I know how I was. I haven't forgotten. And I, that's why I can relate to clients when they come to me and they are very, very sad. Yes. And they grieve. And I said, it's okay to grieve. And even when I had the treatment center, you know, we took wrappers of candy and stuff. And we went out in the forest and buried it and had a little burial and grief process. And wow. that helped a lot. So we did a lot of stuff like that. Practices uh, that helped them to let go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There was definitely a grief process. It lasted for about an hour. Um Yeah. Yeah, but but the, you know, I was determined. I'm I'm not going to fight weight anymore. I'm not yeah. going to have stomach problems anymore. I'm not going to wake up feeling crappy anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I felt so good. Uh, yeah. I, I wanted yeah. to stick. Your energy started coming back, and your creativity. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. How long ago is this? Um, uh, well, uh, the addiction uh realization was in March, so. It, it's to 10 months. So it'd be two, it'd be a year in March. Uh, I started on the carnivore journey on December 28th, one year ago. Wow. It took me a little while to realize all the different things. I thought I was just going to, you know, realize I was eating some food that was making me upset, you know, upsetting my stomach. And I, <laughs> I just tumbled into this entire new life, this whole new <laughs> way of looking at my whole life. <laughs> It's amazing. I love it. You know, we've sort of done the same journey, you know, a 180 and I go by whoop, you know, everything changes. Yes. Everything amazing. changes. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We don't realize the linchpins, the, the, the stakes in our life that are affecting all the other pieces of it. And we stumble upon certain things and all of a sudden a whole new world opens up. Yeah. 
Yeah. We had no idea. Fall. <laughs> I know, I know. It's amazing. I'm so grateful. I'm so incredible grateful. Every day I'm grateful. Yes, yes. That same here, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, we've talked almost, uh, I think, 50 minutes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was fast. Yeah. Good. So Good please Lord. tell us how um, the viewers can get more from you, because I know they're going to want to find out more about sure. you. Sure. There's a lot to say. But, uh, you know, let me know when you publish uh, on your page and I share your work and share your pages and so forth. So people can uh, watch and go and watch and others that you have probably talked to and all that. Oh, yeah, I have uh, medical doctors and mm -hmm. uh, research uh, specialists, Joan Ifland. Mm -hmm. Um, people with PhDs, MDs, all that, uh, yeah. that I interview all the time. And I, that's why yeah. I created the channel because when I realized that I was addicted and I started to be in the chats and the live streams, mm -hmm. I started hearing so many people say, I just have so much trouble every time I do this happens, I eat, you know, and I was just I seeing all this, uh, all these signs of addiction. I thought we need some place to have resources for addiction in particular, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. that I wasn't hearing, you know, out in the carnivore uh, uh, community. No. Yeah. Yeah. So that's no, what, what uh, I use uh, keto carnivore, keto and or and or carnivore as a tool in my addiction, addiction treatment. But my base is addiction because uh, what I've seen, uh, if people don't, if people if somebody that's an addict don't understand their addiction, nothing gonna help. They can go keto, 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 carnivore, carnivore, carnivore. They can, you know, do all kinds of uh, health uh, regime, but if they don't address and understand their addiction, it they're gonna fall over and fall over and start all over, and it's gonna be just a horrible, horrible journey. Yes. So that's why you know my goal is to help people embrace that they're addicts you know first you want to cry we used to say the truth is going to make you crazy uh, the truth is going to set you free but first it will make you crazy <laughs> right <laughs> but once you you face it you know oh so now i get it yes and you connect the dots and it makes sense and you realize it's not your fault it's not your fault at all if you end up being addicted Yes. I think it's a gift to have a sensitive brain, you know. I mean, look at you. You write books. You're creative. You have all kinds of stuff going on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I, I can't wait for the next five years to see what else is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, send me your link to your podcasts and all that so I can share it with uh, my people, you know. Yes, I will. I will. And put it on my, uh, put the, uh, this video too on my website video link later on so mm -hmm. uh, people can meet you and and then they can go on and listen to more things you're doing because um, what my students say all the time is this this knowledge is so important we need to speak it from the rooftops yes that you know you're not a bad person right mm -hmm. right exactly Exactly. I had an eating disorder because I was uh, hungry when I was a very small baby. Oh, uh, oh, oh painful. Yeah. That yeah. was the root cause of it. I knew that I had a food problem, but I didn't know how to deal with it until now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I meet so many people that uh, they start out too as sugar addicts when they're kids because they get a little bit of sugar and it, the brain lights up and then they go on to start dieting in the teens and they restrict and become anorectic and then they uh, start binging because you know the body refuses to starve for a long time so they binge and then they purge and crazy exercise and then you know when they no longer have any energy to do that they become volume eaters and that's how many become overweight mm -hmm. so it's like a progression right i see that a lot i see that a lot yes yeah. and the person is desperate for solutions they're yeah. not yeah they're not bad they're no not they're you know what 
I used to tell them, do you know that you're a very strong, resilient person? And they look at me like I come from March or something. Me, I'm the worst. I can never keep anything up. I always fail, blah, blah, blah. And I show them when I do the sugar assessment and the curve, look at this. Do you think a normal person would be doing what you're doing? All the money you spend on diets, all the effort you sp spend on all the things you've tried to do, you know, they would die probably. I mean, you have survived all that. So yeah. can you imagine taking that resilience and grit that you've had all these years struggling, put it into a new toolbox? That's going to be recovery. Yes. And that's how they get hope. So it's never too late to turn. Yes, I love that word, hope. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we need to spread that a lot. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. I'll put all of your uh, information in the description mm -hmm. so that people can find you. And uh, wow, I would love to speak with you again, maybe next year or something. Yeah, I would love to meet you again, too. It was a very pleasant meeting. I really love your energies. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bitten, for Thank being you. with us today. Okay. Bye-bye.